Okay, welcome to part three of this tutorial series. In this video, we are going to finish off the backend file and create the registration page. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is basically do that. Right, um, the valid credentials file uh, file function. This is the longest of the functions by an extra line. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is um, do that. Um, as with the user system, um, user function, add user function, sorry, um, we need to prevent SQL injection. So what I'm going to do is just copy this here and paste it here. Um, we don't need the HTML enti entities because we're not inserting any data. Once we've done this query, that data is lost. So no need to think about that here. Um, okay, so next thing we need to do is basically the same as this query, but we're also going to be checking the password. So what I'm going to do is just copy this query and paste it here. And then we're just going to add in another where um, condition, which can be and user password equals a string, which is going to be the password, like so. Um, and then what we need to do is basically return. Um, Okay, so let's just explain this logic here. Um, this count function, as I explained before, uh, will return the number of rows from in the table where this condition is met. And this condition will only be met where the username is the username we supplied and the password is the password we supplied. So basically what we're doing is checking the password for the given user. Simple. Um, it will also return zero if the user doesn't exist, which, we, which is good. We don't want to just let people that haven't got a user account log in. Um, so that's actually yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so what we want to do is return true if this is one, because users usernames are unique. Remember from the previous video, and we want to return false if this is basically not one, which is actually what we did here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just copy this and paste it here, and not delete it. And save the file, and that is actually the backend file complete. Um, see that. Luckily, I did that function last because it was basically made up of parts of the other one. Okay, so um, what we're going to do now is create the registration page. Um, so let's just go to the registration page. Um, so what we need to do first, as with all the pages, is include the init file. So let's just include that. Include. Um, it's in the core folder, and it was called init.inc.php, like so. Um, okay, so what we are going to do is first check if the form has been submitted, and we're going to do that by checking for the existence of the three um, post fields that we have. I just scroll down to look at the HTML form. See, the, the submit button doesn't have a name, so that's basically not submitted, <laughs> effectively anyway. Um, we have the username input, the password input, and the repeat password input, which I've highlighted incorrectly there. So what we're going to do is check if is set is set post username post password and post pos posot post um, repeat password, I think I called it that, all have values. So we'll only get inside this block if this is true, and this will only be true if this, this, and this have values that are not null. Okay, so once we're inside this block, what we want to do is check the conditions that I demonstrated in the first... The, mm, see, now I can't say the first part. In the zeroth part, <laughs> the introduction, there we go, to this uh, tutorial. I'm sticking with that, I'm determined. Um, if I haven't watched the other parts, go back and watch them to find out why, what I'm talking about. Okay, so what we want to do here, uh, once we're in this block, is check the error conditions that we mentioned before. Um, and basically, we do each of those in turn, and we are going to store the error string, like the error that we're going to output, in an array of errors. Um, and then we're going to check if this Array, errors array contains more than um, 
one uh, more than zero sorry more than zero elements and if it does that means there's been an error so we're not going to do the registration and we are um, going to show those errors um, this check is done sort of twice which is a bit annoying really but there's not really a nice way around it um, it's not a major problem for the moment anyway so yeah um, actually we'll use empty that'll be more efficient yeah let's not use empty I mean let's use empty and not count there you go I've made a change okay uh, right let's just start by um, doing the checks so the first check we're going to do is we're going to check if the username they sub entered is empty we're going to do that using the empty function which is if empty post username like so but we're going to spell username right and if it is empty, we want to add to the errors array. Uh, and what we're going to add is a string, which is just going to be the username cannot be empty. Like so, uh, basically, the empty function um, will return true if this variable is considered as empty. It will only be considered empty if its value is an empty string, null, zero. And I think that's it. Maybe a few other things. Effectively, we're just using it to check for an empty string because, well, people can enter a null byte, but <coughs> it'd be a little bit rude of them. <laughs> but basically, you only ever do that if you were to try and do some bad hacking type stuff. So, yeah. Uh, and zero is just kind of pointless. So, um, yeah, that's why we're not worrying about zero too much. It's, it's a silly username. There you go. Okay, so that's that condition. Um, we are going to check the password and repeat password field against empty. Um, if either of them is empty, we're going to add the password cannot be empty error message. So we're going to do if empty password post password even. Oh, that's it, an empty array. Uh, an, ar an array with no elements will also be counted as empty by the empty function. Um, so if password is empty or the post function is empty no <laughs> repeat password so if either of those are empty it just mirrors the word empty so that can sound quite odd uh, errors is going to have um, the password um, cannot be empty. There we go, that's that. And the next one we want to check is if the password and the repeat password are equal. And if they are not equal, we want to um, add the password verification error. So let's just do that, pretty simple. If post password not equal to post repeat password 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 um, and if that is true we're going to do errors like so add it into the errors array password verification failed which just means that um, the password and the repeat password don't match pretty much okay so the last check we want to do is if the username is already taken because um, we don't want people to be able to try and register the add user function will fail um, if someone if you use it with a username that already exists um, because we marked the column as unique so the query will, query will fail but we don't want people to just have a failing registration we want to show them why so that's why we do the user exists check and here we're going to use the user exists function that we created this function um, remember it returns true or false so we can just use it like we can just do if user exists oops post username really can't type that word today or any words on any day <laughs> username if username exists so if the username already exists we want to add in errors Alright. Equals um, 
let's just say the username actually let's say no okay right let's go with the username you entered is already taken like so okay so once we've done the error checking we want to check if there have been any errors and we'll do that using the empty function again like the millionth time actually for the fourth time because I'm sure it feels like I've said that way more times anyway um, so we're going to check if empty errors equals false so if the basically this is checking if there haven't been errors if the errors array is still empty remember an empty array does this will be true no yeah this will be wait no we want that sorry what am I doing <laughs> that's for the next check um, this will be true for an empty array for an array with no elements so what we want to do inside this block is call the add user function that we made um, and we just need to remember from the page we just need to pass the username and password so that's here um, so we're just gonna, oops wrong file, uh, we're just gonna pass in the post username oops it doesn't matter which one you use for the password but I'm just gonna go with post password because it's a little bit clearer because remember we made sure they were both the same so you could use a repeat password here um, and when, we, when they have registered we're gonna set the session variable to their username um, so they sort of log to log them in if you like so let's just do that session username oh my god I'm sure I've typed that wrong every single time I've written it equals post username actually again because this goes directly to the screen um, we probably should wrap it in a HTML entities to prevent XSX things well to be fair it would be pretty stupid of the user to um, XSS themselves but yeah um, just makes it a bit more professional if that they try it and it doesn't work. I think, oh, they've secured their site and maybe they won't do bother doing any more bad things. Okay, so after that, we are just going to redirect them back to the protected page and kill the script because that's what you do after a header when there's more processing left. Okay, so here we are going to do what we're going to do: header, header, no, location protected.php and then die like so okay so now the registration system should work um, we're not going well actually we can briefly test it because it'd be nice to know if it was working so let's click the register link so it gets the registration page um, if we click that we don't get redirected to, um, to protected because remember we haven't actually if I go back to our code we haven't actually put in the display of any errors yet which is going to go in this block um, so if I go back to our browser and let's just register the username test password test repeat password test hit register uh, I really can't type that function <laughs> okay so let's go to the um, user page and let's put that I that I always miss there reload this making sure to resend the data and I've made the same typing error on the um, register page silly silly I reload again hit resend you see we get register which is kind of odd let's check the database users okay well oh okay it was because the user already existed the second time we submitted it um, the fatal error came here because I spelled this wrong after we'd already added the user um, so the second time we resubmit the data um, this check came out as false meaning that this came out as false meaning that the user wasn't added and we weren't redirected so it is working and that's I've explained why that doesn't appear to have worked I'll briefly demonstrate in the next part with a actual registration um, just keep a note of the code make sure I don't change anything I'm not cheating really now it sounds like I am. I'm really not. <laughs> um, you see, it's been added. Uh, that's the same hash. If you're good at recognizing hashes, no idea why it would be. Um, username test. Blah blah blah. Boring, boring. 
Um, the session should have been set, which I will demonstrate in the next part as well. So thanks for watching and join me in the next part.